Well, folks, it's here. Arms against tyranny. Look at that lovely starting screen. Oh, look at the blue curve go up in the distance. Beautiful. Let's go already. There is more. There are a few new countries here in this list. Finland, Sweden, Norway, and Denmark. And I recommend we start with Finland today. This is the centerpiece of this DLC. Mighty Finland standing up against the big old Soviet Union. So let's get going. Iron Man mode is on with historical focuses and we'll try to make Finland great again. Can we get finish him? Who knows? We might. Beautiful Finland. Much has changed. So the leaders now get different traits and they all have a personal agenda. They have a set of goals you as the player have to achieve or the public will lose trust in them. And that is represented by this balance of power. Either they hate him on the left or they love him on the right. And it directly affects the national spirit of Sisu. Finland used to have this. This is a weaker version of the original Sisu, but it can be so much stronger if you get to very high trust. So very important to work on that. Not just that, there are more new things. Let's hop into the big one, the focus tree. And it is massive. We have the alt history history communism one, which I will refuse to touch. Then we have the more or less historical Finnish neutrality branch with its many, many options. I'm, I'm looking forward to playing a lone wolf run. And then we have the right wing policies. A little bit of fascism never hurt anybody. Right. So more industry here and military stuff here split under army, air force, Navy. And all the way over here, we have the Nordic Council. Like this is a focus tree split or shared between all of the new countries. All of the Nordic countries have access to this tree and it can only be used if you are in a faction with the other Nordics. Well, or at least one of the other Nordics. And as you work through it, you get bonuses and the person who completes it or the, the leader gets a bonus and all of the members to that faction also get bonuses. But more on that later. It's, it's not something we'll touch on in this run. What else? You can see here, military industrial organizations. These used to be the regular old designers and there are some changes here. Depending on what country you play, you have access to different ones. Finland, for instance, has access to three different equipment designers for basic equipment. So an infantry manufacturer, an artillery manufacturer, and an automotive manufacturer. One naval manufacturer, the raiding fleet, and one tank designer, which I don't know if Finland had tanks, but okay. I'll explain how they work as we go through it. But essentially, as you do research and production runs using the designer, you get experience. When you get more experience, you can select these traits that boost the equipment equipment or boost your production efficiency or output of anything related to that designer. And uh, as you go along, you get more and more traits unlocked. You can also assign policies. Once you have five traits unlocked, you can set certain policies that might help out your industrial capacity. It's all pretty neat. Now to the meat and potatoes here. What are we going to do here today? I want to see if this new and improved Finland can still do finish him. And what does that mean? One, we cannot join a faction. Two, we have to destroy the Soviet Union. And I think we can. I think we can. I believe we can. And to that end, we have to take a look at the focus tree. Communism is out. Finnish neutrality could work, but you would have to go with the lone wolf. Why? Well, you can't join a faction, so join the allies doesn't work. And the northern defense front also doesn't work because you make a faction. By definition, you will be in that faction. So lone wolf. Problem with lone wolf, you stay non-aligned. When you're non-aligned, eh, you're kind of hamstrung in regards to a lot of things. You can't expand early. You can't go up conscription laws early. You're pretty screwed. It's not impossible. It's not optimal, which leads us to right wing policies. Now, I know what you're thinking, but that gives you the option of joining the Axis or creating your own faction. And you're right. However, I would just need to skip this part of the tree. In total, one, two, three, four, five, six focuses at most. And that's it. I still have access to this part of the tree where all the good stuff is in regards to additional recruitable population. And I still have access to national unity and all of the bonuses like war goals and extra cores. I still have access to that as well. I just don't have access to these two sub branches. So I'm going to go with right wing policies as a good fin. In preparation, we're going to do a bit of memory. So before I do this, I'm going to say what I'm recording now is on a fairly early build. So this is pre-release. This may not work when you try so don't take this as a guide. If it still works, fantastic. You can follow along. If it doesn't, I'm sorry, but I don't decide what the devs do once I've made my video. What we're going to do is delete the army. We don't need it anyway. You'll see why in a bit. We will use our civilian factories to build the mills down south. 
Yeah, down south is nice. Karelia has the highest infrastructure. Let's start with that. Research, we'll start with the basics. Finland is a little bit limited in terms of industry, so we're gonna limit our research to infantry equipment and all varieties of artillery and anti-air. And maybe some support companies, but nothing too fancy. Production guns, just make guns for now. Guns, guns, guns. We'll follow up with artillery and anti-air afterwards. Mostly a lot of guns. Speaking of guns, at the start of the game, I don't know why, but your initial production run doesn't have an MIO assigned to it. You can see I added these two new lines. They look slightly different and they have this icon. That means the industrial thingy is working on that production line. The starting equipment does not have that thingy, but you can press this button here and assign it manually after the fact. And there we go. I would recommend you do that because this gives experience. And we'll also need convoys. Okay, we are now going to rush right-wing policies, prepare a military coup, straight into a fascist regime. I know, we're rushing for a civil war and it looks like a bad idea, but I'll let you in on a secret. It's broken, and I don't know if they'll fix it. Why is it broken? Well, if as Finland you give away or sell all of your equipment and let the civil war fire without anything changing, so no additional decisions, no additional focuses, the country gets split. The south is you, and everything in the north is the original Finland. Guess where all the military factories are? That's right, they're all in the south. As a result, you sold all of the equipment, it's gone. All right, let's get a military coup. There is no equipment for the AI to start making divisions with, and they don't have mills to make divisions. You do. You still hold all of the military factories, and you can use all of them. Yeah, it's stupid and I love it. Right, military coup prepared. Now we get a bunch of decisions. We can buy equipment, appeal to the middle class, secure the military, Military. All very good if you want to have an actual legitimate civil war. How about we just rush into a fascist regime, trigger the civil war, and just break it. So while all that's going on, we do have a stockpile of equipment. We want to get rid of it. I could go in here and delete it. Would definitely work. If Spain were at war and I could send her lend -lease, I would use that trick because it still works. However, there's a new trick. You see this button here, the two hands shaking. That's the new international market. What can I do on the international market, you ask? sell equipment, add equipment to market. And I am going to sell literally everything I own at the highest price possible. And if anyone buys it, fantastic. They can have it. If nobody buys it, also fantastic. I'll just get it back and I can use it to make divisions. I know it's stupid and I love it. I'm not gonna do it with the convoys though. I, I need the convoys for something else. So you put up equipment and in exchange, other countries can buy that for, to make it simple, civilian output. They will assign a single civilian factory for a certain amount of days and it, it will count towards production. How exactly the production and the purchasing stuff works, I wish I could tell you. I am way too stupid to explain this. It comes down to whoever buys your stuff sends over a certain amount of industrial capacity in the form of a production bonus or a construction bonus to your civs. It doesn't directly give you civilian factories, but it makes the ones you have work at a higher efficiency, S sort of. Yay, there we go, fascist regime, regime finishes. All those guns are gone. There are no guns in our inventory. There are unfortunately also no troops, but that is okay. Let's, uh queue up a couple of divisions, everything goes towards that. If I had not sold the guns, but simply put them on the market and kept them in the market, I could now cancel and get these horses produced really quickly. While I wait, I'm going to grab another focus. I prefer to get this thing. Its initial effects aren't that huge, but what it does do is unlock a certain political advisor. It gives us 200 weekly manpower. 200 weekly manpower is a lot. Or we can take this one, enhance the southern infrastructure, just to get us a little bit of infrastructure, make construction better, eh, start work on our industry. You'll have to make that choice yourself. We have a bit of political power. Let's go straight into war economy, which is ridiculously cheap due to our advisor. Love it. And we're also going to straight into extensive conscription, which is great because we will need a lot of manpower. Fun fact, there's just not that many fins around. And as soon as we can, we're going to force deploy these guys. And really all they have to do is rush some victory points. Uh, Heinrichs, congratulations. You're in charge. Going to work on national unity and down into our first target Estonia but you know let's get a little infrastructure on the way and I'm gonna hire Elias here he's gonna give us 200 weekly manpower which is a lot trust me for Finland that's a lot and there we go Finland has been annexed and they had nothing so white Finland is here I could have sworn we were white already but hey 
Who am I to judge? Okay, cool. Let's stop the production here and start training up some basic infantry. As many as we can. All right, that's 16 divisions. Fine. Highest priority possible. I need troops for what I'm about to do next. Let's take a look at our leader, Vilho Anala. Good traits. And his personal agenda wants me to have more than 300k manpower. That's going to be a tough pill to swallow. I cannot have too much support for socialists. I can deal with that. And I cannot lose any cores. Eh, I think I could do that. So let's start by getting rid of democracy. Democracy bad and anti-democratic rates. That's going to give us stability in the long run as well. Now, as for research, we're going to take a little side tour from the usual path here. I'm going to go and grab naval invasion tech. There we go. Transports. We have a target across the sea. We can get a war goal on Estonia or at least a claim on Estonia fairly easily through Viron Kansa. What that does is send them an event where they can either accept to join our faction or get annexed. And if they say no, well, nothing happens, but we do get claims, meaning we can justify a war goal on them relatively quickly. We'll be going for that war goal. Right, let's force deploy three more, then we'll have 10 divisions. That's the maximum I can use for naval invasions. Anyway, after that, we can maybe recruit more. I, I just need so many more guns. Let's spend some more political power. I want to get the army of fence expert so we can get XP ticking early. Plus division attack is always great. All right, got national unity on to Viron Kansa, giving us hopefully a good war goal on Estonia. And we have our naval invasion tech. Let's keep things moving forward. Probably need to work on some gun stuff because we will be fighting. All right, let's plan the naval invasions. Ideally, we want to overwhelm the enemy here. Estonia is not exactly a mighty enemy. They have troops and that itself may already be a problem because while I also have troops, they're, um, need I say it? Pretty shit right now. Oh, and if you haven't noticed already, feast your eyes on the hour and date counter. We're going to unpause. Oh yeah, baby. Look at that thing go. They have made this run so much smoother. Anti-common turn pack. Sure. I don't like the reds and Viron Kansa has fired. Let's see what they give me. Ah, oh, they rejected our proposal. We could respect their decision or let's go with that. This gives us claims. Then we use those claims to justify a war goal, take claim state, Viruma, 130 days. And in 130 days, we go to war. Get some more eco going. Industrial development. We will need to do a whole lot of industrial development. Trust me. One of our designers has reached the point where he has enough experience to make some changes. Now we can now select these traits. This is a bit like uh, a talent tree for those of you who've played World of Warcraft. Uh, depending on what you choose, your equipment improves. The lines are much the same as they are in the focus tree. So full lines means there's a direct link. Dotted lines means it's optional. Let's go with whatever lets me get more equipment. Reinforced stocks. I like stocks. Sure. And now all of my infantry equipment has more soft attack and more reliability. So now we're going to go to that infantry equipment here. We're going to create a variant. Click this button. Apply that thing for five army experience. That's pretty much how it works. You create a new variant and you can start making the new stuff. Let's declare that war and see if we can get there. The Navy's out. Well, Navy, the, <laughs> the six ships we have. Invasions are prepared. We're going to hit them as hard as we can. The reason I chose Tallinn is obvious and the tiles next to the Lynn so we can encircle and take the port. Hopefully we're trying to take Rakvera to uh, prevent or delay anyone coming from Narva. And the reason I'm landing on this tile is, well, they keep troops on these islands. If I could just put a division there, that'll pin those troops on those islands. This is the most precarious bit of this entire gambit. Fortunately, I can actually launch all my invasions at once. You attack there, you go there and then attack Tallinn. At least we're getting that done. I don't like using these force attacks, but oh God, they're pinning me. I will have to. There, There is no way I can make this happen without force attacks. All right, secondary landing, you go there you go there all right let's let's try and make this encirclement happen i may actually need a secondary uh force attack. I can now do ambitions in the south. Again, it requires you to control an Estonian core. That can happen day one if you get lucky with your naval evasions. It is what it is. I wasted probably five or ten days not taking a focus, so be it. We'll now do ambitions in the south and we'll get claims on Latvia and Lithuania. We most likely will only be able to take one of them and I guess we'll take Latvia in that case, but if you're lucky with world tension, you know, you, you might get both. There we go. Estonia folds. Hurrah. Could annex it. I would recommend however you don't do that puppet them you don't have cores anyway and then use the war operations to get all of their factories and all of their resources it's not much but it's more than you would get when you were simply annexing them now confirm and exit and we have a beautiful puppet finish estonia 
Wonderful. And now we prepare to take on our next target, which is going to be Latvia. Could call Estonia in, but why do that if you don't have to? In terms of focuses from now on, we go big on industry, get our industry rolling, get our manpower up through all of these wonderful focus that give us more recruitable population. So a lot of good stuff here. And there's some more good stuff here, especially Greater Finland, which is what I want. I want those cores because that gives me manpower. As far as army command goes, I'm going to go with professional officer core early because obviously it's just really good. I pick bold attack as well because I want my generals to have the highest attack possible to hurt the enemy. We have support artillery in this division. It's a no-brainer. You always get support artillery and you rarely if ever get recon. At least I personally never chose recon. But now look at what cavalry recon and other recon does. Look at the soft attack. It adds a flat 10% additional soft attack to your artillery support and your line artillery. If you are going with big boom bang giant infantry divisions, you know, my, my usual shock troops or usual elite divisions, that's a flat out bonus of 10% soft attack. It will melt the AI. So yes, I will be picking recon from now on until they fix it. All right, justification's done. We'll declare war. We'll not call our puppet in. Simply send these naval invasions on their way. Should be easy enough. Slow the game down a little bit. Once we've landed enough troops that we have freed up some of our capacity, we'll launch naval invasions on this side of the country as well. We might be able to intercept some of the troops. There's more troops landing as we speak. You go there, you go there. You go there and there. Okay, so far we've generated 8.3% will tension, but we still have a peace deal to go and another justification if I want Lithuania. So I don't think I want to justify in Lithuania. It's very likely they will get guaranteed. I could try and it wouldn't be that much of an issue, but is it worth it? Let's give it a try. Uh, well, let's give it a try. If it doesn't work out, it doesn't matter. It's a claim, so it doesn't go away, the war goal. But yeah, probably not going to work out. They'll very likely pick up a guarantee. All right, secondary naval invasions are also off and... Yeah, I expected that. They're, they're getting stopped, pretty much all of them. Oh, one of them landed here, so maybe we can take Riga. Yeah, I don't think we're in danger of losing this. There we go. We'll give them the same treatment. I'll take their ships. I think that's two submarines. We'll puppet them, select all, and then just war reps and resource rights. It's not much, but it's something. There we go. Have they picked up a guarantee yet? No, but they will. We have generated 11% will tension. They are going to pick up a guarantee. I'm going to cancel that justification. I know because we're not at 25% world tension yet, but we will. I could wait and see if our world tension generation goes down, but eh, I doubt it. For now, let's prepare for our true enemy, the Soviet Union. That is what we need to focus our attention on from now on. We'll start putting up coastal battalions that will guard our ports. I will use my puppet's men for that, and we're going to set up defenses. An offensive line to the south, defenses in the north. I have some plans here. I have some plans. So we have until... December or November, at least late 1939, I think, to get ready for the Soviets. And I want to be ready to kill them in one go, which means fix the industry now, then work on army stuff and just turn Finland into the beast it is always meant to be. And of course, we're going to go with superior firepower. Soft attack is king if you're fighting the AI. In theory, this justification will increase world tension by 1%. We have, according to the game, only generated 8.7%. So let's see if that works. I'm also going to grab armored trains because I will not have an air force. I want to build two supply hubs, one here in Sala and one here-ish in Onega. What these will allow me to do is project some power into Onega and Murmansk. When I fight the Soviets, I want two attacks in this area. One, from Sala into this here, just cut the railway link, separating Kola from the rest of the front, then I can mop up Kola. And then another attack here towards Petrozavodsk. Why? It's where the their other supply hub is. If I could pull that off, everything here is without supply and I can destroy that at my leisure. So I will need to build supply hubs to make that happen. And let's reorganize the railway system so we can build these supply hubs in a timely fashion. And we're moving them to the top of the queue. They need to be built first. I'll build railways afterwards. Still need industry though. A lot of industry. Yeah, I think it's time to up our conscription laws. We are definitely out of manpower and we're going to need a lot more troops. Let's go to service by requirements. No guarantees on Lithuania. This is stupid. And I love the fact that this works. We're going to declare war. And I'm going to call Latvia in because I want to walk through Latvia. This is so dumb and I love it. Unless it's by design, which... 
means it's not dumb. Still love it, though. We got the Baltics. We got the Baltics. And there goes Lithuania. A nice boom. What are we gonna do here? We are going to puppet them once again. One, two, three, four. But we're not gonna take Memel. Germany wants Memel. If you puppet all of Lithuania, Germany is simply going to declare war on you because the Lithuanians will get the event, see that they're in a faction, and that they feel strong about that, and they'll say no. We really don't care about Lithuania enough to be drawn into a war with Germany. So let's just submit our demands there and take all of their damn factories. And they can keep Memel. I don't care about Memel. So I'm simply going to take all of their states except Memel and then stack resource rights on all of them. Perfect. So now we have Finnish Lithuania and Lithuania and Memel. All right, we've taken over the something I can't pronounce. That gave us free units. And I think this is a template I'll leverage. It has a nice amount of support equipment. I'll add a couple of infantry battalions to bring them up to size. And we'll use this as our filler. So we'll train up more of these guys. So at least have uh, two full armies, I'm thinking. Yes more fun things to do. We have a special forces tree here. Split under, this is new, obviously. Split between mountaineers, marines, and paratroopers. We'll be taking a look at the mountaineers. It does not just boost mountaineers, but it enables something called rangers, which is a special special support battalion that's pretty much an upgraded version of your recon. Instead of cavalry recon, you get ranger recon. Yeehaw! So I'm thinking, what if we start working on getting those rangers a little early? So I'll research mountaineers. I don't plan to use them, but you know, having access to rangers might be good. Finland needs every edge it can get in this struggle against the mighty Soviet Union. While we're waiting for the Soviets, let's get an agency. If I'm going to fight the Soviet Union to the death, I don't really want to walk to the Ural, so best invest in some spies as well. Yeah, we're almost all mobilized out. So let's grab a couple of extra recruitable pops. It's not much, but it's something. Finnish economy also looking strong. That's a lot of factories I have. Way more than I had at the start. Production is ramping up nicely. I'm very satisfied overall. There we go. This should be fun. The Soviets demand Karelia. I don't think so. I could accept. Of course, I'm not going to do that. Let them come if they there. They get a war goal, but all of our troops are in position. I've got enough infantry to hold the line for a little bit. Just a little short on artillery for my offensive units, but that will be solved e eventually yeah it's a little sh little shy on the artillery requirements we can make this work let's slow the game down and see what the soviets do great so the winter war declaration there blah blah blah, blah. as if all the bonuses finland gets at the start or throughout the focus tree aren't enough we get another massive bonus called the winter war mobilize more speed get more crudel pop less winter attrition and more defense on core territory we are built. It also gives us the demand to have the Soviets back down. If we control Leningrad for 30 days, we can offer the Soviets a white piece. If we control Leningrad, Kola, Onega, and I think Olonets here, so everything in, in the peninsula, whatever, we can also demand those states and a white piece from the Soviets. Of course, that's not enough. We want more, but there is now the option to demand those peace negotiations, so you don't have to capitulate the Soviets if that isn't your game plan from the start. It is for me, though, so... Uh, <clears throat> Excuse me while I uh, try to walk into Leningrad. And up north here, let's start a spearhead. Oh, no, let's do that manually. Let's start a spearhead towards there. There we go. And down south, we'll wait for the offensive to halt. And then we are going for a little walk towards Petrozavodsk. There we go. And with that blow, we should probably hurt them significantly. All right, so we'll cut the link here. Up there, we've pretty much cut the link already. Uh, one more tile. Oh, the fall. <laughs> I took Leningrad already. So if I were in a peacemaking mood, I need to hold it for 30 days and then we can demand for peace. We're not about that peaceful life here. We're going to make the Soviets regret they were ever involved in this whole thing. And down south here, I've also taken the supply hub in Olonets. That's going to be great. Let's link that up to our own network. There we go. Make that a top priority. Well, up north, we've already cut the Soviets off in the Kola Peninsula. Yeah, I don't think we have all that much to fear from the mighty Red Army. They still have a ton of pretty bad spirits. Just to make sure we can actually you know, keep things rolling, let's train another 24 divisions. I don't have the manpower for it, 
but eventually. The Red Army's cut off here as well, so we'll mop that up. Nice. 30 days are up and we get this event. Click the button, doesn't do anything. It just unlocks this button, demand peace negotiations with the Soviet Union. You don't really care. Yeah, so much for the Red Army in the north. They're gone. These guys are gone. Yeah, Soviet naval invasions will be a thing. Annoying. Right, so there's eight divisions here, eight divisions here. They're all pretty much in good shape. I'm gonna redirect everybody else to this area and from here we'll push out. So like I said, we're going to try and use our border and the puppet borders to create smaller pockets kill the units in them and keep pushing south using the borders of neutral nations to crush Soviet troops between us and a hard place. Of course, it's going to take a while. I need to fix my equipment deficits and manpower deficits, but it's still early and I've already pretty much decimated the Red Army. You know what? We need more soft attack to crush those squishy Soviets. Toad rocket artillery. I don't usually do this, but I want to I give toad artillery, a, uh, toad rocket artillery a try. And before I do anything else, I just realized I have forgotten to turn on my mod to name my divisions after channel members, which means I'll have to do it manually. Only the elite are worthy and the elite will be named after channel members. So if you want to see your name featured in the armies, why not sign up for membership? There we go, 24 elite divisions and we are almost ready to start our counterattack. I'm going to have these guys filter into the appropriate positions in the line and I'm going to start pushing out from Leningrad. We're going to take victory points and we're going to start hurting the reds. So my plan here is to just expand the along this river, head south as far as I can without overextending myself, and then cut towards my puppets to create like an encirclement between their border and the big old line I'm gonna extend. Destroy as much of the Soviet Union as I can and continuously head south. Obviously, I wanna push for this river first. It's a really good defensive position. I can threaten Moscow from there. I just continuously try to get big encirclements on the Russians. All right, let's not get too greedy. We'll start making our way to... Ooh, actually, I just wanna get to that supply hub and then I'll cut towards my puppets. Now, in the grand scheme of things, I may be getting a little greedy with this one really ambitious push, so may not be the best idea I've had. They're not gonna let me get to where I wanna go, so let's see if I can push towards Pskov. Are they gonna stop me? Am I gonna make it? I think I'm gonna make it to Pskov and create first encirclement. Well, first big encirclement. Pinning attacks. Pinning attacks! No! Come on. Yes! All right, so we've made it to Pskov, the elites can rush there to clean that up and we'll we'll sort out the railway. We'll sort out the railway. Okay, Jaeger movement is also done. Let's continue heading down to militarized society. More research guns. No, no. Everything is kind of ahead of time right now. We don't have the industry for a legitimate air force. Uh, recon, I guess. Yes, maybe? I'll research mechanized. We might be able to do something with mech. First, genuinely good pocket. That's a lot of divisions here. That'll that'll certainly hurt them a little bit. Pocket is cleaned up. We'll wait for the supply hub to become active here, and then we can go further south. So then I'll head for this one, cut to the river there, create another pocket. Now let's take a look at our special forces tree here. The first thing just boosts mountaineers and all other special forces, but it also enables rangers. And further things down the line here, improve those rangers, giving them various abilities depending on what you pick. This one improves their performance in the cold, so in snow and winter. This one improves it over rough terrain, so a movement bonus for mountain tiles from those rangers, the supply or the extra support company. And it just keeps getting better and better as you go. Let's see if we can assign some rangers here. Let's unlock the rangers and have a look. So we go into our divisions, we have cavalry recon. The stats are what they are, you can see them on screen. We cannot just add rangers since they are mutually exclusive exclusive with the cavalry recon. I can replace the cavalry with rangers. Now look at the stats. It is certainly interesting because these are not buffed. These are absolutely not buffed. Yes, I lose a lot of soft attack because the rangers do not buff artillery with that 10%. But if we invest enough points into them till we get here, mountain artillery, all line artillery gets 20% extra soft attack. Plus, there's a whole bunch of other bonuses that these can give. All right, we now have rocket artillery as well. Let's put that into production because I would like to maximize my soft attack. And we're about to touch tips here. Encirclement? Yes, encirclement. Ooh, a cry for help. Let's see if I can get some free manpower. We've completed the encirclement. The elites can finish that off, and I want the rest of these units to head to the outer line. Finland grows larger, but it's taken a while. It's already been six months. I don't feel like I've achieved much, but I have about another year before this, uh, the Germans show up. I don't think I need to worry that much. Eh, 
There's not as many divisions that I would have liked, but it's more than the Soviets can afford to lose at this point. They are down to, I'm guessing, 210-ish divisions, so that's not bad. Uh, one and a half million casualties, and I'm not even at 100k. At least I am sitting pretty on some really good terrain in most places. Rivers, forests, it's all pretty okay. Up here is like, this is irrelevant. Like, the Soviets can do nothing. There's no supply for miles for them, so it really doesn't matter. Now let's see if I can get my pincers to meet in the middle. I'll go to all adults serve and then militarize society to offset it because this is a really good bonus this makes the penalty not as bad it's still bad but not as bad yeah we're gonna meet and we're gonna create another little pocket there we go these guys to the main front these guys encircle this section it's slow going but it's so satisfying you know getting all these soviet divisions destroyed because that's the best way to deal with the soviet union it's not to endlessly push the line back it's to just destroy the units and then walk into the territory they can no longer defend. Okay, now I just want to try something incredibly stupid. I just want to see if I can do it. I want to break through the line here at Vitebsk, push towards Mogilev, Bobruisk, and down towards Komel, all along the, what is this, the Dnieper? Yes, along the Dnieper, down to the Black Sea. I want to cut off the Soviet East or west. I will extend my infantry line as I go, and hopefully I have enough units to cover the full front without getting my teeth kicked in. I just want to see if I can do it. If I could, that would be incredibly funny. Speaking of incredibly funny, let's make another collaboration government because I don't want to walk to the Urals. We're already at Gomel. No real Soviet resistance is materializing. Line's getting thin though. Line's getting really thin. It is exceptionally hairy, but I, oh, if it works though, if it works out, it'll be so worth it. I think this is enough. I'm gonna take Kiev, head to Venezia, and meet at the Romanian border. I don't want to get too greedy. We'll clean that up, make another cut towards the Black Sea, so Odessa is also gone, and then we'll just have one long front that I can barely cover. I don't believe it. We're gonna do it. We are actually going to meet... We've effectively done... Okay, so everything... <laughs> everything on the Soviet... West is encircled. Now we just need to clean that up really quickly so I can redeploy all those other units to the actual front line that matters. Just look at this. They're just falling apart. They have nothing left. Love to see it. Love to see it. I just need to hold on the, what is it? The eastern edge. I just need to hold the east, crush the west, and then I can walk into the Soviet Union. This is a lot of divisions that are just going to disappear. And I can do another cut from Kiev down to Odessa or Mikolaev and do it again. And they're gone. The entire western front of the Soviet army is gone. And now from Kiev, we go down to Mikolaev and do it again. Might need to stop over in Dnipropetrovsk. And now we head further south. Let's head to Mikolaev. I'm just walking in and they're not even trying to stop me. Well, let's head to Odessa so these units cannot withdraw. I think I outnumber the Soviet army now. Yeah, I, I outnumber the Soviet army. They've taken 3.15 million casualties. And our pincers are gonna meet around Bryansk. I've outrun my supply lines once again, but doesn't matter. We have made it. Now to just keep the door open while we make the cut. Yeah, I'm gonna finish off the Soviet Union before the Germans are even involved. This is so great. Oh, this Finland is strong. Finnish troops marching on Moscow, virtually unopposed. The Soviet army is down to at most 70 divisions. I don't think Stalin's bouncing back from this one, boys. And we've taken Moscow. How close are they to capitulation? Not that close, but my secondary collab is in progress. And when I get that one, all I really need to do is walk towards Stalingrad. Oh, Stalin, your field marshals keep falling for it. Every single time they keep falling for it and I just hurt you more and more and more. Well, if you're gonna make it that easy on me, I'm just gonna have to go for it. There's virtually no army left as far as the Soviet Union's concerned. So, uh, big ol' attack order. And I've only lost 200,000 men. I can, I can, yeah, I think we can keep going. Just a push on Stalingrad, a push on Sevastopol, and maybe we'll drive to Baku if we really have to. And the collaboration government fired. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's over. We've defeated the Soviet Union, the entire Comintern on our own as tiny little Finland. Oh, it's so stupid and I love it. We've squeezed every little puppet out of the Soviet Union that we could. Ah, uh, I also took Wilno so I can give it back to my puppet. Can I give it back to my puppet? I think I can. There we go. Beautiful. And we're still not in a faction. So just like that, we have just achieved finish him. But there is so much more we can do. I know that we have more cores. We have Finnmark. We have Norbotten. I have another plan. How about we go to war with the German Reich next? Yeah. I think Germany is aching for a spanking. In preparation, I'm gonna queue up a couple of extra divisions. We might need a little bit more oomph to get this done. So more shock troops are coming out the door. We no longer need to stay out of factions. We can create our own faction from now on. The Finnish Supremacy League. Love the name of that. All right, we finished our justification for Memel. We're simply going to declare war on the Germans. We're not going to call our puppets in. And it's going to bring in Japan and Italy don't really care. They can't really get to us anyway. Our ports are guarded. Our fronts are covered. And we actually have something of a navy to set the strike force. All right, let's see. Can we declare war on this guy? No, but he'll get pulled in eventually. He'll get pulled in and we can start our offensive in the north. So much research to do. I should probably start work on airplanes at this point, but by the time we're done, I mean, by the time the airplanes are done, we'll have won the war. The Norsk National Regering has been pulled in. I'm sorry, Norway, you're about to have a really bad time. We're not going to join the allies. Like I said, we'll make our own faction. It's a way better faction. So we'll just start pushing south from there. Look at that. The Finnish Supremacy League, the mightiest faction in the world right now. At least they have the biggest font on the map, and that is all that matters. I'll fight you over that. But uh, all things considered, yeah, Germany can't touch us because we've not pulled Lithuania in. That's easy. And up here, we're just walking all over very weak Norway, which is fine. We're going to go as far south as we can. Eventually, they will capitulate and we will control all of Norway. We haven't given access to the allies. I don't intend to give them access. If I give access to anyone, regular Norway is going to take all of that stuff back. Don't want that. They haven't earned that stuff. It's my stuff. Yeah, so as a result, I can take Finnmark in the eventual peace deal with the Axis. My hope is if I control Norway, I can set up a couple of armies on Sweden. Justify on Sweden, it's going to take 10 days because this is a core. Hopefully Sweden doesn't pick up a guarantee and Sweden gets pushed towards the Axis because I am already at war with the Axis, but not the Allies. That's my hope, at least. I have no guarantees that it's going to work. I might end up fighting Axis and Allies simultaneously, but I feel feel it might work and that would allow us to take Norbotten in the peace deal as well because if we need to own all of our Finnish cores so that includes Norbotten and Finnmark there we go Oslo is about to be taken come on take Oslo and there we go unfortunately that capitulation means those troops all went back well the areas all went back to regular old Norway maybe I should just let them try and recapture some of that stuff you know that would be funny if I just set up here and not do anything and let the AI try to take Norway back so I can then take it off them yes I'm a devious bastard Sweden requests control of northern Norway why would I do that Sweden Sweden threatens hostilities over Norway really no I said I said no really wasn't anticipating this but if oh my god seriously they did it well you just signed your own death warrant they what that means I have to kill Japan and Sweden's probably teaming with the German soldiers as well this is just so incredibly messy but I'm still having fun and I will continue to have fun right up to the point that I have to go to Japan oh there goes Sweden I guess we'll finish off fake Norway and then on to the Germans and then on to the Japanese because apparently I don't have anything better to do today I'm out of manpower I could just use Russian manpower at this point but do I want to do I want to bother with that whole thing <sighs> I probably should. This has been a lot more expensive than I would have liked. I, I think I've wasted more manpower just grinding through Norway than I did fighting my way through Russia. All right, we'll use the Russian troops. I think it's going to end up being cheaper anyway. All right, let's call Little Lithuania in and we'll start pushing from here. I don't have air superiority, but my units are way better than whatever the Germans have. And it's probably going to be enough. Yay, another encirclement. At least I'm still getting encirclements. That means I'm a good player, right? Yeah, it does. All right, we'll kill that. 
that off and then we'll keep pushing out further up here everything is about as under control as it can be we'll bring these troops over as well and we'll keep pushing germany we should be able to push germany hard makeshift bridges makes it all go so much smoother and the mechanized can now start rolling as well we've reached plains and less horrible terrain we'll see if we can get to this section here speed should win the day for me here once i can outrun the main german force there's not that much opposition so i should be able to punch quite heavily situation not quite as favorable as i would have liked but i'm still pushing towards stettin and berlin let's keep that going the mechanized here is getting bogged down a little mostly because again we're hitting rougher terrain and i didn't keep moving and if you don't keep moving the enemy will eventually find enough troops to get in your way but i think we're about to meet at the border here and bada bing bada boom all right regular infantry you get to the outside front line mech you go to the inside front line and clean up the pocket and then we'll evaluate where we go from there the other offensive towards berlin is still going strong so i don't need to worry about that this is another good amount of german divisions we've encircled at least if we can take stettin that means we have the supply hub we need to get to the area again makeshift bridges should make this if not a walk in the park a whole lot easier berlin has fallen hurrah actually why is my puppet getting all of this occupation while well, it should buy rights go to me yeah. I would have to garrison it. So let the puppet have it. I don't care. Something tells me Germany is not long for this world. I'm, I'm pretty sure they're going to fall over any day now. Well, there goes Germany. Now for a quick trip towards Italy. Yeah, Italy's dead. Italy is very much dead. While I'm mopping up in the Balkans, let's set up for the naval invasion of Vichy so we can kill them off. We need to take their Morocco, no, Algerian holdings. So their Algerian holdings, that's where they still have some cores. So we'll take that out. And once we do that, it should be over. And I can go and focus on Japan. Peace deal! We're going to focus on the stuff that I desperately, desperately want, which is everything. Everything Norway has and everything Denmark has. Not Iceland though. Unfortunately, I would very much like to get my hands on Iceland, but they're not included. But I can still maybe trick them. And we'll take that as well. So everything in this general area is now mine. I will take everybody's fleet because I have to get to the Japanese. I don't know what bothers me more. The color of Finnish Italy or France. Both of these really bother me. Final move, the naval invasion of Japan using our giant stolen navy. Japan usually isn't that difficult and this is probably, yep, no exception. I can even drive the mechanized in here without any problem. Now to ship the rest of the boys in and we'll simply kill them all. Let's just take Sweden and everything they have. And with that, Japan. Japan looks disgusting. So we have the state of Japan and Japan. Yeah, that can only end peacefully. Absolutely. But the Finnish Supremacy League rules everything. We control all of our cores. Finland is the mightiest nation on earth right now. We are on top of things. I could fight the allies now just to get Iceland and have all of my Nordics collected under one banner. But uh, I'll be honest, don't want to. I'm already on scraping the barrel. I'm down to 180,000 manpower. We've done enough. I've shown you guys how strong Finland can be. I hope they don't nerf her because this is incredibly fun to play. I think we can, ah, again, yeah, we, we need Iceland to get that click, to get that Nordic unity. But still, Greater Finland has a nice ring to it. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoy this video. I hope you guys will enjoy the next video as well. And if you guys want a copy of Arms Against Tyranny, use my link down below. Go pick it up. It is so worth it. It is one of the best DLCs for Hearts of Iron that I've seen. The quality is top-notch. It's so much fun. All right, I'll see you guys later.